Get on the flavor train. Get on the flavor train. Get on the flavor, the flavor, the flavor train. Get on the flavor train with your girl, Lady T. Yeah. What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Tanya Lady T. And yes, this is another edition of Lady T Sensations. All aboard. Let's get on the flavor train. All right, y'all. I'm going to do something different. Maybe we'll start doing this on my channel as a remix. We're going to do eating popcorn. And whenever y'all see the popcorn, we're going to do a mukbang popcorn movie review. Because, uh, yeah, I got to talk to y'all about this movie called The Boy. So, anyway, we're doing simple popcorn. Got my popcorn tin. Over red abacas in the house. Movie theater butter. And a LaCroix. This is a passion fruit flavor. Yes, let's get into it. Y'all. Y'all, 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 y'all. Yes. Let's get into this movie. First of all, mm, that's good. If y'all haven't seen it, this is going to be a spoiler, so. It was okay. I was really kind of disappointed. I'm going to be honest with you. The gist of the movie. This young lady. She's hired to be a nanny. To the boy. So of course you know. In the movie, they're showing her driving, or actually a car picked her up. And it's in the country, in the woods, you know. So she's, her, the driver's driving her up to the house, and she, of course, she dozed off. So anyway, when she gets to the house, the driver opens up the door. And of course, this is big old castle looking house, you know, like a English estate, something a princess or duchess would stay in, you know, one of them big old gargoyle looking houses, stone, made of stone. One of them houses, when you roll up at night, if you look up in the windows too long, you'll see two little red flashing eyes. <laughs> Trying to paint a picture. So anyway, she gets out and she, of course, she looks. Goes in, meets the people. So that began, you know, Telling her everything she needed to do and who comes by, blah, blah, blah. Popcorn make you chew fast. Oh, that's good. Some of y'all, I guess it's an acquired taste. Some of y'all don't like it. One of the comments, one of my viewers said it. Tasted like beer or metal carbonated water. I think what it is, because it has a fruit taste to it, we our, our brain automatically says, ooh, it's supposed to taste sweet. But for me, I'm cool with it because like I said, I'm looking for the burn. 
and the you know that that undertone that undertone burp that's what i'm looking for so i don't miss the sweetness i really don't when 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 my brain says passion fruit orange pineapple you know i'm good but i can see how some people feel like it, it tastes like a beer or excuse me or you know um a, you know carbonated metal i don't get that but i don't get that in my mouth but anyway nonetheless i like them so anyway They begin to give her the rundown of what she have to do and she have to follow that list of duties as it pertains to the boy verbatim. In other words, don't skip nothing on the list. Or I like when you go to the grocery store, don't go to the grocery store. And you want to make some spaghetti with meat sauce. You don't buy the tomatoes, the onions, the everything needed, but you didn't buy no meat. You didn't because you didn't you forgot to pick up the meat that was on the list. The the most important ingredient. So anyway, they were just telling her that, you know, about like that. Don't you gotta wake them up, you gotta da 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 the whole nine y'all. Feed them, dress them. He got to play the piano. He got you got to read to him. You got to cut his toenails. I, I'm you know I'm just exaggerating that that one on the list. Had to kiss him good night. You know stuff. Well, honey, when she walked in the room where the boy was. And these were the, the people that were soliciting her as a nanny. They were older people. So I'm like, she walked in the room so she could meet the boy. They were standing in front of the boy, so you couldn't. And he was sitting down in the chair, so you couldn't see him. So of course, when they said, "Okay, meet," I forgot the boy's name. Let's just say Tommy. Meet Tommy. And voila, she recognized it's a doll. So she bust out laughing. And she said, are you kidding me? She said, is your son going to come around, you know, come through the door, running through the door? Surely you ain't talking about this doll. So, they, you know, they got all, they got over that. But you see, I understand it's a movie. But see, if it were me, I would have walked right out of the door. I would have told, uh, uh, hey, curtain boy, because you know they had the uh, British accent. Uh, uh, Sir Robert, uh, come get me in my clothes and put me back in the car. I'm not staying here. Oh, that would have been me. Mm -mm. But. She stayed on, and so, meantime, back at the ranch, these the older people, you know, the, the old, older couple that had her keeping their son, the boy, the doll, they, you know, they, they showed that they're packing, like they're going on a trip or something. So they're packing their bag. They're packing their clothing in the suitcases. And there were some other things that happened. But I'm, t I'm touching on key points, y'all. So when this couple's getting ready to leave, the woman hugs the nanny and says, I'm so sorry. And, you know, like I said, they in between there, they were doing foreshadowing and all that kind of stuff.
But she never said what she was so sorry about. And so, you know, you know how when somebody say that, the girl just went like, her eyes were sort of like, you know. So they went on about their business. So that night, okay, that's when stuff started happening. So when they left, the nanny, she, she threw a blanket over the dog because she was like, mm, you you got, you're creepy, you're creeping me out. So she throws the blanket on top of the doll. So she goes in another room and she's drinking a glass of wine and talk to a friend on the phone. You know. So she goes, she goes back in the kitchen and pours herself another glass of wine. Well, she didn't drink that wine. She rose off again, and the camera was focused on the wine, and it was daylight. And, of course, when the camera focuses back on the wine again, it was still the same amount of wine in there, but dark had fallen, so it had got dark. So she had napped and dozed off for a while. So she gets up to take her wine glass. Oh, and she had made a sandwich. And so she was taking a plate and a glass back in the kitchen. So she walked past the door where the boy was sitting, where she threw the blanket on. And then when she walked back, the blanket was off the doll. So of course you know that's when the music come in. Dum dum dum, you know, dum dum dum. Something has happened. The blanket is off the boy. So she goes walking in there. You know how they do move. And she just, I think she picks him up and throws him in another chair. So meanwhile, the grocery man, which is somebody she met when she first came to the house, when, you know, when the owners were saying, hey, he come, the grocery guy, he comes once a week and drop off groceries, so blah, blah, blah. So, anyway. And other little weird stuff were happening. She was just like, oh, oh. Yeah. So, the grocery man asked her out, you know, get out of the house, whatever. So, she said, sure. So, he said... Okay, I'll come back and pick you up at whatever time. So she gets on the phone and starts talking with her friends and telling her friend that, oh, yeah, I'm going to go out and blah, blah, blah. And her friend was letting her know that I guess her husband, whom she ran away from, that's why she took this nanny job to get away, to clear her head, blah, blah, blah. He had been calling his her friend trying to get up with her. and So anyway, they were just discussing that. So she got off the phone, she goes in there, takes her shower, you know, the hot water running on her face, blah, blah, blah. She had took her necklace off and set it on the scene, you know, and then she had this pretty dress, chiffon dress that she was going to wear her to her little date. And she laid in there in the bathroom, I guess, so the steam could sort of wrinkle, uh, get some of the wrinkles out. So, of course, when she gets out the shower, they show that the dress is being pulled. They don't show you who's pulling it, but they show the dress being pulled and taken out of the bathroom and the, and the necklace being pulled off the scene, you know. And, of course, everybody, you know, I'm thinking it's the boy, the porcelain boy. So, anyway, hmm. She gets out the shower. Of course, she's clutching her pearls, her imaginary pearls. Oh, oh my God, where's my dress? She thought the guy, the grocery guy, had come to play a prank on her. And she called out his name. I think his name was Malcolm. Malcolm, this is not funny. If you've got my dress, it's not funny. Of course, Malcolm didn't answer. So when she gets out in the hallway, she notices that the attic door 
and ladder was in the position of down. So of course the music, dun, 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 you know. So she goes up that ladder with that with a towel wrapped around her. She gets up there in the attic. As soon as she get up there in the attic and look around, certain things fall and scare her snot out of everybody. You know how everybody jump in the movie theater. But anyway, I'm home by myself, so I'm just jumping. And then she sees this figurine that looks like a person. And she falls back, hits her head. But, oh, but before that, the guy actually that was supposed to take her out on a date, he actually came. And she saw him and heard him when he pulled up. But she was she was up there in the attic. And in the meantime, when she, as soon as she got up in the attic, like I said, things happened. And that door slammed. The ladder pulled up and the door shut. And she couldn't get out of the attic. She was beating on the you know. On the little trap door, I guess that's what you call it. And so when she hears him pull up, she start banging. She tries to find something and start banging. But he couldn't hear her. She was way up there in the top of that Argo old castle. So anyway, he leaves because she didn't come to the door and all that. So as soon as he leaves, again, after she done fell out and fainted and all that, the little door releases itself and opens up so she can get out. Anyway, just fast forward to a whole bunch of stuff. So, now here we come to the conclusion. Toward the end, like I said, all this little stuff was happening. Throughout the movie, she was trying to show this Malcolm guy, the grocery guy, that she's not crazy. She had found a way to show that the, the boy was moving from room to room because... You know, she would move out of one room and she would sit him on the floor and then he would be gone. And she did the little chalk outline to show him, okay, when we walk out of here and I knock on the door, he ain't going to be. So, you know, they went through all that. And so finally, it happened to where while he was there, there was proof that the boy had been moving, the, the porcelain doll. So, you know, that the porcelain doll was alive or whatnot. So... The guy finally believed her, and they were trying to think of things, what was going on. In the meantime, they forward, they go to where the old people were, the, the parents were. They were off at some beach or somewhere, and all of a sudden, they, they, it, they show them writing this long letter and sealing it and mailing it. And both the, the old man and the old woman... They were standing at the shore of a beach or a lake or something. And it shows them picking up rocks and putting big rocks in their pockets. Go ahead, Masha. So guess what they do? Both of them hold hands and walk out in the ocean or this large lake and they hold each other's hand and they walk deeper and deeper and so they drown themselves in other words they didn't fight it and I guess the weight of the rocks was what you know to help them keep to keep them to stay down so I'm like huh so then it flashes back to the house well, the letter finally arrives, and they just put this mail in this little mail shell, uh, you know, file, you know, on the table. Nobody really read it. So finally, the man that she ran away from, her husband. He shows up at the house, and he's apologizing to her, saying, "You know, you going home with me? And y'all got a plane ticket for us." And then, so the grocery man shows up. So you know, they get into their little thing, and whatnot, and he finds out that she's there watching over a little porcelain doll. And he said, yeah, this is crazy. You need to come home with me, blah, blah, blah. So, 
Mar um, uh, Malcolm the grocery man, he meets the husband and asks her if she's okay. And he said, yeah, so he leaves, but he didn't really leave. He go out there and sleep in the car. So anyway, fast forward. They finally, all three of them in the house because the husband and the nanny, you know, they get the argument and loud talking. So that wakes Malcolm, the grocery man, in the, up in the car. So he hears the commotion and arguing and stuff. So he jumps out of the truck and run over there in the house and say, what's going on? You know. And they were arguing about that dog. She had grabbed the dog. Holding the dog. And he was like, give me that dog. 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 So she said, no. So some kind of way, he snatches the dog from the girl. And he smashes the dog's head. On the on the on the chair, and of course it shatters and goes all to pieces. And they show it in slow motion. And when he smashes, and then she was like, "Oh, you know, slow motion." Okay, I know y'all are like Tanya. Okay, get to it, y'all. I was so upset. When the porcelain doll's head busted, you start hearing the walls of the house chatter. Like there was somebody behind the wall shaking the walls, making stuff fall off the walls, making things, pictures. and So the husband saw her. He sort of leaned toward the wall trying to figure out, hold on, what was, there's somebody in there. There's somebody in the wall. So he gets closer to the wall, and it was a mirror. All of a sudden, you see this force bust open the wall and shatter the window. And the, the husband, he falls back slow motion, like the Matrix. Okay, and so he falls back on his back. Then all of a sudden, there was a big hole in the wall. And you see this hand come out of the wall. Then you see somebody peering out with a face. And you can tell it was a porcelain face mask. And they had a beard. Now, in the beginning of the story, they said that some kind of accident happened and the boy drowned or something, something. I don't know. But evidently, the boy actually didn't drown. The boy actually had grew up. And that was him who busted out of the wall. At the age he would have been, Normally, or at his real age, and I said to myself, "That was that was almost as disappointing as the movie The Village, when they were trying to keep everybody in, in a certain way of lifestyle, so to keep them from venturing out into regular society, they 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 make you know they one or two of the people in the village dressed up." like this killer to keep people from, you know, leaving their village and come to find out it was a joker dressed up in a, a a cloak with a porcupine back. Yeah, that's how I felt. I felt gypped. Now, it was pretty good up until then. It was okay, but then why did you do, why, why do they do that kind of stuff with movies? I'm serious about it. Now, some of y'all are saying, Tiny, it ain't that serious. It's a movie. That's why it's a movie. But, no. No. 
Just like men when there's and women that are serious about sports, that's how I am about the movies. I am a movie, but I am passionate about. Why would you do that to me? Why? I was so upset. So anyway, the gist of it is that man, he was the one actually moving that doll from place to place, from room to room. It wasn't the actual doll itself that had come alive and made you think that it had come alive. No. It was the very boy himself that had grown up living in the walls of, them, of, of that house, of that mansion, of that gargoyle castle. Y'all... I don't know what to say. Y'all put it down in the comment section or uh, put it down there in the caboose section of the flavor training. Let me y'all tell me, am I missing something? Anyway, that's all I came on here to talk about and to eat some popcorn. So you can get some crunchy sounds. The ending was just such a dud. And wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And the other thing about at the right at the last, okay. So Right there at the very end of the movie, it shows the the boy or the man now putting the porcelain doll face back together. So they thought they killed him, but he but he won't really dead. Cause I think she stabbed him with a pitch knife or something. Something she stabbed him with, and she thought she had killed him. Cause he didn't move no more. But then they showed him, you know, right at the end, the, the camera is following all the little nooks and crannies in the walls of the house where he had gutted out and created a life behind the walls of the house. And then the, the camera finally stops where he's sitting at a desk putting that porcelain doll back together. And they found the letter when they were running from the guy. They found the letter that was that the parents had written, saying that they were sorry they weren't coming back. They had, you know, I don't know. It just uh, it was so fragmented. But anyway, let me know if y'all like these type of videos. I just wanted to try out something different. And give y'all some eating sounds. But anyway. Mm. Thanks for stopping on the flavor train because what? What? Flavor is worth that.